Yes, ma'am. Now it is okay. Okay. It takes maybe a few seconds to get started. Okay. So, uh, cardiac catheterization. So, for the task exam, you will notice that in cardiac catheterization, one question, question will be there. Mostly, there are certain things. That yesterday also, I said from ventilator, one question. From spirometry, one question. From statistics, about four to five questions. From cardiac catheter, one question. Like that, some questions are fixed. Mostly, they'll definitely going to give you. So for cardiac catheter, what you need to do is that first you need to study these normal values. Okay, this one I have taken from the science of pediatrics book. Here they are telling about the saturations as well as the pressure in the right side of the heart as well as in the left side of the heart. Okay, just look at this. Don't get confused. Give me a minute. Let me have water. A long class, I guess. Okay. So, see, if you look at this, see, first look at the saturation, oxygen saturation in the right side of the heart. So, right side of the heart means right atrium, right ventricle, and pulmonary artery. Also includes a superior vena cava because all are in the right side. Now, look at the saturation on the right side. It's all same. 65, right atrium saturation 65, right ventricle 65, pulmonary artery 65. So, the saturation on the right side is same. According to the science of pediatrics book, it is given 65. But in some other PDFs, I have seen that they gave up to 75 also, which is also normal saturation. So, if the saturation is less than 90, we can consider that is like, you know, deoxygenated blood is present in large amount. So we know in the right side of the heart, all are deoxygenated blood, right? From the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava, deoxygenated blood enters into the right atrium, then to the right ventricle, then to the pulmonary artery. Therefore, the saturation is 65. Okay. Now, the pressure. In the right atrium, the pressure is 4 millimeter. In the right ventricle, it is 25 by 4. And in the pulmonary artery, 25 by 15. So, you know, in exam, mostly the electrolytes and other hormones and all the values, mostly it's given in the task exam. What is not given? Certain things are not given at all. One is the ventilator setting readings. Second is the cardiac catheter readings. And third is the ABG readings, arterial blood gas analysis. Those three readings, three in these three conditions, you have to mug up these readings. That's why before starting cardiac catheter, you have to make sure you're thorough with this. If not the pressure, at least a rough idea you should have that you should be like four, very less than 25, then here 25 by 15. Okay, and the saturation is same. It's easy to remember. Now come to the left side of the heart. In the left side, you will see the saturation is also kind of same. See? So the left side of the heart has the left atrium that receives the oxygenated blood from the lung. So the saturation is 99, very high. In the left ventricle, again, it contains 99, 98% of saturated of oxygen saturation. Then in the aorta, 97%. So you can see in the left side of the heart, you can consider the saturation is more than 90. Okay. And in the right side of the heart, the saturation is say less than 70. So overall have this in your mind. Now come to the pressure. In the left atrium, the pressure is low, only six. Here four, here six, similar. Now the pressure in the left ventricle, obviously it will be high because it is going to give us the cardiac output. So it is 75 by six. Pressure in the aorta, it is very, very high, 75 by 50 as compared to all the other like all the other values, okay? So the first thing to study, how you will study is that you have to remember the pressure as well as this uh, pressure as well as the saturation. Now you might think this is the last moment. Why am I studying? Don't worry. This everybody has to study every day. This is kind of a repetition thing. It's hard to remember. Moreover, you guys have enough time to study so you will study this and this is one of the things that you need to revise just before exam because you will receive one portion from here, okay? Now, let us start.
okay so i will draw and date because it's important to draw uh, dr sartaj anywhere you have any doubt just stop me there and then okay yes ma'am and for the ones who are watching the recordings if you have any doubt after this you can knock me any time or then i'll try to clear in the next class okay so this is the right side of the heart this is the left side of the heart okay i'm drawing a rough diagram of course this does not resemble the heart but you know it this is what is this draining into the right side yesterday i told you what are the structures that drain into the right side of the heart superior vena cava inferior vena cava coronary sinus coronary sinus they ask okay so this is the superior vena cava draining into the right atrium now this is the pulmonary artery that arises from the this is the pulmonary artery okay that arises from the right ventricle right ventricle pulmonary artery okay now this is the aorta that arises from the left ventricle in the left atrium the pulmonary artery pulmonary veins are going to come yeah, that's not so important here now okay now the first thing we have to remember okay the first whenever you are getting oxygen uh, this uh, readings usually there will be no history they give direct sometimes they give some history a child was there and he came with these these cardiac catheterization was done but most of the time as i have seen in the recalls is that they will give you only readings so by seeing the reading how will you understand they'll give you like this readings okay but of course this is the value of a normal heart right for cardiac catheterization if they are doing cardiac catheterization that means there is some pathology so the values will be increased or values will be decreased some abnormality will be there now in the question if they show you see like this like this they give you the values the saturation as well as the pressure so in the question first what you will do you got all the values your first duty is to check the aorta okay what is the saturation in the aorta now if the saturation in the aorta is more than 90 then it is a acyanotic heart disease okay if saturation is good so it will not cause any cyanosis oxygen is already present but if the saturation is less than 90 or you, you say it's 80 70 that means it is a cyanotic heart disease okay so is this clear i have written this in the mm -hmm. next slide but just to remember for now so if the saturation is more than 90 it is a acyanotic heart disease if the saturation is less than 90 it is a cyanotic heart disease so the trick is now after seeing the aorta itself your diagnosis will become half or one third when you see the diagnosis when you see the uh, sorry when you see the in the question the aorta the oxygen saturation is more than 90 so you will think okay it is a acyanotic heart disease now what are the three basic acyanotic heart disease that is there tell me asd vsd pd yes asd pd asd vsd oh dr janathapu you are here i was going to message you i was like this class is very important you should uh, come for live yeah i was slight later 5 minutes late i joined class 5 minutes late okay okay i waited for some time and all others even dr gurlal and all others told me they they opted for a recorded class anyway so your diagnosis in basically for the mrcpch tas exam for akp they asked for pulmonary atresia tricuspid atresia so many other things but for the tas exam they ask only the basic things tof tga that is cyanotic as cyanotic in cyanotic we have tetralogy of fallot or we call it tof and uh, transposition of great vessels or we call it tga in acyanotic heart disease what we have asd vsd pda so when you see that in the aorta the saturation is more than 90 so you have to think about okay the saturation is more than 90 so it is a acyanotic heart disease now what are the acyanotic heart disease you have, you have three acyanotic heart disease asd vsd pda so your diagnosis you are cutting all of them and you are cutting into three you have only three diagnosis now okay i will teach the other also first let us study now what happens here 
let us study what will happen in case of asd okay now what happens in asd the foramen ovale will be open right in case of asd atrial septal defect so what you will see is that normally what is the saturation in the right atria right side of the heart normally the saturation in the right side of the heart is 65 right here also 65 here also 65 here also 65 everywhere we just saw it is 65 janadapu uh, did you see this yes ma'am it is clear uh, dr jannat dr janadapu did you see oh. this no 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 i don't say this okay the, uh, i'll tell it again then because these are the normal values you have to remember in order to understand so the saturation and pressure is given on the right side as well as on the left side of the heart on the right side of the heart the saturation is kind of constant which is 65 to you can say 70 this uh, this uh, table is taken from the sop book so this is 65 in some other pdf i have seen 75 also okay so in the right side of the heart the saturation is very high very low that is 65 and the pressure is like varies right atrium it is 4 right ventricle 25 pulmonary artery 25 by 15 now in the left side of the heart the saturation is more than 90 obviously because they have oxygenated blood so you have to remember in all conditions what will happen in normal condition the right side of the heart will have they will have all same saturation level and the left side of the heart they will have all above 90 saturation this is the normal thing to study cardiac catheterization you have to memorize this entire table okay you have to remember right side saturations are more than saturation is 65 which is almost constant for all has to be constant which is normal and on the left side it is more than 90 see in the left atrium it is 99 in the left ventricle it is 98 and aorta it is 97 and the pressure also you have to understand okay now let's come to this so what i was saying is that on the right side of the heart we know that the saturation is always 65 65 65 everywhere it is 65 okay that is in the right atrium right ventricle in the pulmonary artery everywhere it is 65 now what happens is that you see the readings and suddenly you are seeing that the saturation in this part that is uh, say in this right atrium they are saying the saturation in the right atrium has gone to 85 okay has gone to 85 and this saturation was 60 supposed to be 65 normally no this has gone to say 70 okay now you are going to receive like this okay they are they are going to show you that okay first you see first you see what you will see first you will see the aorta and after seeing the aorta okay okay first we will see the aorta after in the aorta you are seeing the saturation is more than 90 when the saturation is more than 90 you think of asd vsd pda asynotic heart disease now we are studying what happens in case of this asynotic heart diseases now the saturations in all this was supposed to be 65 65 65 65 right but you will see that in the right atrium they are giving 85 saturation and also this in the right ventricle also normally it was supposed to be 65 it is becoming 70 now you have to think okay what is the source of this increase in saturation that means there must be some oxygenated blood coming from somewhere right otherwise it was supposed to be 65 how did this increase to 85 so there is some source of oxygenated blood now in the right atrium can you see where is the source of oxygenated blood the superior vena cava can it be a source of oxygenated blood no ma'am because it has all deoxygenated no. blood it is deoxygenated yes. blood and there is no oh, yeah. there is nothing here no other things now the foramen ovale foramen ovale could be present and that could pass down pass the left to right shunt that is that could give the oxygenated blood from the left atrium to the right atrium that is the reason we are having increase in this saturation okay and when this blood comes to obviously the normally what happens the blood goes through the superior vena cava into the right atrium 
from the right to the right ventricle now obviously it will move to the right ventricle but in the right ventricle this deoxygenated blood and oxygenated blood from the left side is going to mix up and therefore the saturation will increase so the saturation in the right ventricle will also increase and the, there will be slight change in pressure there will be slight increase in pressure i personally don't look in pressure much first is i look at the uh, what do you say saturation when i when we see the saturation it's easier to understand than to remember the pressure in some conditions you have to remember the pressure i will tell in which conditions but mostly remember the saturations so this could this is this case is case of asd how they will present they will present with increase in the saturation in the right atrium so they will say right atrium is the pressure is equal to 85 percentage then you have to think okay right atrium pressure is always going to be 65 how did it increase there is some source of oxygenated blood how how is that possible and we already studied there is it is a cyanotic heart disease in which a cyanotic heart disease the right atrium will get the oxygenated blood obviously asd in the vsd it is not going to travel like this it's asd right so you have to think about asd so in case of asd what will happen the saturation in the right atrium will increase also there will be slight increase in the saturation in the right ventricle is this clear to you guys yes ma'am yes yes okay so let us start again oh i better delete this <laughs> 